Okay, welcome back everybody. In this video tutorial, I will be showing you how to perform a stress analysis on an IEM. Uh, the first thing we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at is whether or not you have assigned a material um, to all the parts that make up your assembly. Um, in this case, I mean, we can see that there are different colors to it. Um, you know, and a lot of people um, make the assumption that they come up here and use this box, the, col uh, the color override, that they're actually assigning a material. When in fact, all they're doing is just um, manipulating the visual appearance, uh, the cosmetic appearance of what that IPT looks like. Um, so what we need to first do is go ahead and we'll just uh, jump right into this. We'll uh, take a look at the body in this case um, for our uh, product. And uh, we can see it's, uh, you know, black has been chosen for the color override uh, for a paint. But the real question that we have is whether or not this has been assigned a material. And how we can check that is going over to the physical tab. Okay, and looking in here in the material, we can see that's currently a default. There's nothing available to us uh, regarding mass, area, volume, center of gravity, and uh, all these inertial properties. So what we're first going to be doing is selecting and uh, choosing, okay, oak. Um, you know our wood as a material to be assigned um, to that part. Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and do apply and close. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and finish that edit. Now at this point, um, I would be doing the same thing for the rest of our parts. Okay, once again coming up, going to I Properties Physical tab, and coming down from this list and choosing Oak and assigning it to that part. I'm going to go ahead and finish the edit. Now at this point I'm going to pause for just a couple seconds and I'm going to be going through and assigning um, that oak to every single part that makes up this IAM. Okay, that took just a second, and uh, if you noticed, if you had any repeat parts throughout that IEM, like for uh, example, if I look over at my browser, I can see the elevator was used twice, engine was twice, wing, rudder, and so on. If you did it the first time and you went and selected on uh, the second instance of elevator uh, after you've assigned it to the first one, you already noticed it was already there. Uh, but as long as you have that, that oak, uh, now applied to all those IPTs in the IM, we can continue uh, moving on with the stress analysis. Um, all right, so from here, we're basically ready, uh, you know, to start our stress analysis. So uh, where you're going to be going is to your environments tab. We select on that, and we can see this uh, second icon here, which is for our stress analysis. So we go ahead and select that. And we should be seeing our uh, contextual tab for stress analysis come up. A lot of things are grayed out. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing is going over here to where it says create simulation. All right, once we do that, we're just going to go ahead and say OK. And now we're going to be seeing a few more options show up um, in our panels up in the stress analysis contextual tab um, throughout that ribbon. The first thing we're going to be looking at doing is talking about um, fixing points uh, or uh, faces of this assembly um, to the ground because what we're wanting to do is apply a force someplace and we have to have you know ha have to have this uh, assembly fixed in order you know to apply that force and then just see how this is going to react to the force that we've applied to it all right so if we really think about it I'm gonna go ahead and orbit this um, this assembly here uh, if you really think about it, if we took this toy and we put it on a floor um, what's going to be touching the floor? Well, the two wheels on the front are going to be touching the floor, as well as this edge along the back um, of the plane. All right, so we're going to go ahead and come up here to our constraints panel and say fixed. Okay, and it's going to be asking us for the location uh, of what we want to fix. We're going to start with the wheels first, and we're going to go ahead and uh, apply this fixed constraint to the actual face of that wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and select there and there, hit apply, <clears throat> and now we're going to um, rotate and orbit this around and see if we can get this. Yep. All right. And now we're going to be selecting the edge okay, of the back of uh, the tail fin um, on this plane. So we're going to be selecting this edge, this edge, and this edge. And we're going to go ahead and say apply, and then we can cancel out there. So we can see we've applied our fixed constraints to the wheels as well as the back edge of that wing. 
All right, so that has been done. Now, since we have uh, you know a couple areas that have been fixed, now we can uh, go ahead and apply a load, okay, a force uh, down upon this um, assembly. All right. So next part, let's go up here. Um, if you look here where it says loads, we can see we have a force. Okay, we can go ahead now. It's going to be asking us where we want to apply the force um, on this uh, on this jet fighter. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and just drop that force right on this surface at the very top of it. Um, and what we're going to be basically doing here is uh, simulating um, what a seven-year-old child. Um, would be doing if um, he or she stepped on this plane. All right, so if this was laying on the floor, we can say that uh, his or her foot would be applying force to that face. We can see that the direction is correct. Okay, and now it's asking us for how many pounds of force. Now, through my research, it looks like uh, your average seven year old child weighs 53.5 pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in 53.5. And once I've done that, I'm going to say apply. Okay, and then just cancel out of that. All right, so we got our fixed constraints. We have our force that's being applied to the top of this. We're basically ready to go. Now, if we come up here and say simulate, okay, we can see we have a run button. So we go ahead and hit the run button. This might take just a couple seconds uh, to compute all this. Okay, sorry about that pause. It took a little bit longer uh, than I wanted. Okay, so as soon as we have that, we can see uh, we have this color glyph that's been applied um, throughout um, our assembly. Now, you're probably looking at this, and um, it's kind of getting the spaghetti effect. And what's happening is they're actually exaggerating um, the force that's applied um, and the stress and strain that we're seeing on this um, on this IM and this stress analysis. Um, so the first thing I'm going to have you do is come up up here and we can see we have all sorts of different choices right now we're at adjusted times one all right if we go adjusted times 0.5 we'll see that that deflection um, is not as exa uh, exaggerated now let's go all the way up to exaggerated times five and now it just turns into spaghetti um, it's been exaggerated so much um, just really to show you uh, where that deflection is and stress and strain is but what we actually want to see is the actual deflection and stress and strain um, throughout this assembly. So we can see that that 53 and a half pounds has been applied to it. Um, we can see the color glyphs. Uh, really taking a look in here, uh, we can see um, our problem areas, um, when you're getting into the yellows and reds, that's where the most stress is being applied um, in our uh, assembly. Uh, we even have the ability at this point to even go and orbit this. Okay, so you can take a look. And we can see um, right here, we're really getting um, uh, nasty stress throughout um, our assembly. We can see where um, the stress is that's being applied from the force on the top, as well as we can see the stress that's being applied uh, towards the back. Once again, this was fixed as well as our wheels. All right, so let's take this a step further, okay? So next part of this is we come up here where it says animate, and this should look very similar to you. We're going to go ahead and leave the speed at normal. Okay, we can go ahead and uh, leave our steps at 10. Once we hit play, okay, we can now start to see how you know um, our stress is being applied throughout our IAM uh, in the stress analysis. Um, you know as it's uh, being you know applied down. All right. The nice thing about this is now we have the ability, okay, to be able to come out here and we can use our view cube, we can use free orbit, okay, but we can go out there and simply make an animation of this. Um, looks uh, very similar to uh, the animation you're making through an IPN. All right, so obviously we're going to come in here and say record. And it's going to be asking us where we'd like to save this. And um, obviously, um, you know that we're going to be saving this in the same spot um, that we're um, you know, saving the rest of our files. And in this case, uh, I'm going to be taking a look. Sorry, I was hoping to have this uh, done ahead of time. But I'm in some uh, crazy folders here. I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a sec. All right, sorry about that. That caught me totally off guard. But I've uh, I've now gone back to uh, in this case my um, 
my Activity 3.3.4 product disassembly, and I've just simply given it that name um, as well as underscore stress analysis. It's saved as an AVI, so I know it's an animation. So I can go ahead and do a save on that. And we can go ahead and turn all this up and say OK. And now it is recording. Okay, that is simply done. Now I can jump back out here and I should be seeing that AVI that Inventor has created for us uh, for that stress analysis. Okay, and we can see that just real quickly um, how it did that. Okay, now that we have our animation, um, it is uh, saved and, and all that good stuff. Now we can go out there and actually write a report um, on our findings uh, of our stress analysis with that force applied um, to our assembly. All right, so in order to create an, a, a report, we can come up here, go to report. Okay, in uh, the general tab, um, just looking through this, it's just uh, telling us it's going to give us a summary, a logo, uh, as well as it's going to go ahead and give us um, that report title. Um, and we can actually go in there and add a little bit more to it. We can uh, go in there and say uh, this is for uh, activity 3.3.4 uh, product disassembly. Okay, stress analysis report and take a look at our properties we can go ahead and leave that alone simulations we can leave it alone okay the really uh, the thing I'm wanting us to look at is just the uh, the report format uh, instead of a web page since we're going to be using this in our engineers notebook um, as well as our portfolio we're going to go ahead and select the uh, the RTF the rich text format okay once we do that we'll say okay and it's going to go ahead and start compiling our report this might take a couple seconds I'm going to go ahead and pause this. And OK, it is finally done assembling and compiling our uh, stress analysis report. Uh, this gives us a great report. It gives us uh, uh, great images. It then um, goes down in here. It tells us all the results uh, regarding um, stress, strain, and so on. Um, gives us some really great things to use and include um, in our engineer's notebook um, as well as our uh, portfolio. There's pages and pages of this stuff. I know it's a lot. Um, and um, so, anyway, so there is that. Uh, that opened that up right inside of Microsoft Word. So, at this point, you can come out here, uh, go to print, save this out to PDF, okay, and uh, go about doing that. And we can go ahead and save that. Uh, once again, I'm not going to be showing you, um, you know, through my entire mess here, but uh, you're going to be saving that back to your file. Um, once again, that'd be FL underscore activity 3.3.4 um, underscore product disassembly stress analysis report. Um, and that way, now you have that PDF, you can scale it down, um, you can include it as a multiple page. Um, uh, I'm sorry, multiples per page um, in your engineering uh, notebook, as well as you can do a one-to-one -one report um, for your portfolio. Um, in class, we'll go ahead and discuss this a little bit more of what you need to um, um, to include. So there might be some pages uh, that I'll leave you know leave out just because of the sheer number of. Of, of things but anyway there you go uh, there's a gob of information there uh, regarding um, your stress analysis uh, but it can answer a lot of questions especially when we're talking about modifications and how to improve a design um, you know in cases like this where we have assigned a material uh, assigned uh, two fixed uh, constraints as well as added a load to it um, very very powerful thing uh, when it comes to the world of um, engineering and design um, I hope this uh, helps you out with um, your uh, next stress analysis for an IEM.